What's up guys and welcome to the Big Red pregame show here on Slope TV. I'm Ryan Engler alongside Sam Alenikoff and Jake Masbaum. We're here to preview this week's games against Delaware and St. Bonaventure at Newman Arena. This past weekend we got our first look at Bill Courtney's 2010-2011 squad. Big Red able to pick up the win at Albany on Friday night, dropping to Seton Hall on Sunday. But we're here to look forward to the first home game in the Bill Courtney era and that'll be Wednesday night uh, against Delaware. Um, so just kind of looking, thinking about what we saw this past weekend, um, how the way Cornell played and what we know about Delaware, um, what, what can we say about this matchup and what types of things um, are going to be important to look for on Wednesday night? Yeah, well first, you know, Cornell, successful opening weekend. When you go on the road, you're playing without your starting point guard, and Eric Peck, who Cornell was looking at to score a lot of points this weekend, only has three, and you get a win on the road, that's successful. Delaware team that finished last in the CAA last year, dropped their first game of the year to Ohio this year, and you know, they do have a lot of young guys stepping up, and that's, the first guy is Devin Sadler. He had 19 points oh, yeah. against Ohio, and he's a guy who can really take the ball to the basket, get into the lane. Also, it's a nice outside game to go along with it. Other guards that we need to take a look at for the University of Delaware is Juwan Carter. He averaged 18 points a game last season. Couldn't find a shooting stroke in the first game against Ohio, but he can shoot the three. A very good outside perimeter player, something that Cornell needs to keep their eye out on. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is Brian Johnson, a guy for Delaware who started every single game since he was a freshman. Mm -hmm. He tore his ACL last year, missed the entirety of last season, now has a new meniscus injury. So he won't be playing. He's not expected to play for Delaware until after Thanksgiving. So some similarities between Delaware and Cornell right there with them both missing their starting point guard. That's why Sadler got the start for Delaware, and he you know, stepped up in a big way for the Blue Hens. So this definitely is a winnable game for Cornell. A game in Newman Arena, I expect them to come mm -hmm. out on top. And as Adam Weyer said after the Seton Hall game, Cornell just feels much more comfortable playing in Newman Arena. And it's yeah. nice for them to get back there. Adam Weyer kind of did exactly what Adam Weyer has always done, put up high numbers on the boards, particularly on the offensive end, provided uh, energy, provided steals, mm -hmm. kind of that defensive presence and spark plug type presence for Cornell. Taking on Delaware, they're going to be facing a couple bigs with some size, 6'8 eight and 6'8 eight across the front, but nothing too unmanageable. The first guy I want to take a look at is Jamel Hagens. And Jamel Hagens is a guy who's a bouncy forward at 6'8. He can stretch the floor a little bit. He's got a nice mid-range game, and he, he scored 13 points and had 10 rebounds, so he's got a, a good rebounding game as well to go with his, with his offensive abilities. And the other guy who I think might pose some problems is a guy named Hakeem McCuller. And McCuller's a, a bigger body. I like to think of him kind of as a poor man's Herb Pope who, uh, who Osgood went up against on Sunday against Seton Hall. He's 6'8", but he's 250, and he has a, a real back-to-the-basket game, which we saw against Herb Pope. Osgood didn't do too shabby against Herb Pope, though. He had a, a block shot early in the first half and kind of held his own for a while there. So I yeah. think we can expect to see those two guys playing significant, significant minutes. McCuller didn't play that much in the opener because of foul trouble, and uh, coming in off the bench was Josh Brinkley, who had 12 points in 18 minutes. So we may see him in the mix as well, but this isn't that deep of a Blue Hen squad, especially in the front court. Really three guys who we'll see in the rotation. Definitely. Is there one particular thing that we can look at, a key to the game, in order for Cornell to come out on top in their first home game of the season? I mean, I think it's going to come in the backcourt. They've got guys who can really score the basketball between the freshman Sadler, like you talked about, Jake, and also Jawan Carter, who averaged, as you said, 18 points a game. If they can get that type of production out of the backcourt, I think they'll have a chance to be successful. That being said, if Cornell's young guards can step up, as you talked about, too, I think Cornell can come out on top. Yeah, where I'm looking at in this game is Eric Peck. Um, a guy who struggled in the opening weekend, couldn't find a shooting stroke against Albany, got in foul trouble against Seton Hall, coming home to a familiar territory in Newman Arena, playing in front of his fans. I feel like this is really going to be a breakout weekend for Peck. Yeah. With Robleski's status still uncertain for these mm -hmm. games, Cornell is going to continue to look for, to Peck for offensive production. I think he's going to step up and show you what people think Eric Peck could be in these games. Definitely, and there's obviously been high hopes for Eric Peck 
this season. Newman Arena, so good to Cornell over these past couple years. Fans really been coming out. Hopefully that same environment will be there this year, even with the high turnover and roster. I think it will be. Um, and and the, the Newman environment is gonna obviously still be a factor on Friday night when Cornell hosts St. Bonaventure. Now this is an A-10 team, um, a team that hasn't had a lot of success in recent years and is projected to finish towards the bottom of, of the A-10, but they do have you know, a couple of real good players. What can we expect from this matchup and what is Cornell gonna have to do to beat this larger conference team? We'll flip it over this time. I'll take a look at the guards and there are two guys I really wanna focus on. The first is a senior point guard. Let's see if I can get this name pronunciation right. Ogo Adegboye. We'll see if that's, that's correct. Close, but uh, he can score the basketball. He likes to shoot it from the outside. Uh, he had 12 points in, in their opener. Um, or he's averaged, sorry, 12 points, two assists on the year for, for the Bonnies. Um, and the other guy in the backcourt that we're going to see is Michael Davenport. He's got some size. He's a two guard. He's a good rebounder. He averaged four a game last year and averaged eight points a game. But he's stepping into a bigger role this year um, as a starter. And we'll see what we get from them. That being said, that size could potentially cause some problems for the Big Red, who are a little bit smaller at the guard position outside of Max Grove, who goes 6'4", but I think those matchups will be, will be key for the Bonnies uh, going against the Big Red. So Sam, if you took a look at the guards, that means I got the forwards, and for St. Bonaventure, it starts and ends with one guy, and that's Andrew Nicholson. He's a junior, he's 6'9", he's 235 pounds, and he's an NBA caliber player that St. Bonaventure puts out there on the front line. Right. He averaged 12 points a game last year, but really stepping up his production this year. In his first two games for the Bonnie, he's averaging 24 points a game, 23 in the first, 25 in the second, so this guy really can score. Nicholson has drawn a lot of comparisons to John Lohr of Wisconsin, who Cornell saw last year in the NCAA tournament. He's got a nice game in the paint, but can also take it outside, showing a mid-range game, you know, a little deep game in that sense. And basically what this means is Aaron Osgood or Mark Curry or whoever is playing um, the four and the five spot for Cornell is really gonna have their hands full with uh, Nicholson. And it's gonna be a really interesting matchup to see because you know he might be the best big that Cornell has seen so far this season, and that's including Herb Pope. So I'm right. very excited to see this matchup. Who do you envision stepping up for Cornell to kind of deal, deal with Nicholson? Obviously we know who the big guys are, but who do you think is the guy that's gonna come up big if Cornell's gonna win this game? Yeah, um, you know, we haven't seen much of him this year. Didn't play much in the first two games, and, that, and that's Mark Curry. Yeah. Um, Osgood's known as the big who's best at with an offensive game. Curry's that defensive-minded player. And if Eric Peck has the type of game that I think he, ha I think he will have, Cornell won't need Aaron Osgood for, to shoulder much of the offensive burden that he had to shoulder in the opening weekend. And that's gonna create a lot of minutes for Mark Curry, who's more adept at controlling Nicholson on the defensive end. So if Cornell wants to control him and be successful in this game against St. Bonaventure, I think Curry's gonna have to step up. You know, I'm gonna take a look at it at the four spot because Nicholson, can see some time at both forward positions. Yeah. And, and at that four spot, we saw two guys late in the second half against Seton Hall step up. The first was Josh Virginie, and the second was Anthony Gatlin. Both scored eight points, both kind of had somewhat of an offensive game, but at 6'8", and, yeah. and guys who can kind of extend out to the perimeter with a little bit more athleticism, I expect to see one of the two, I don't know who Courtney thinks has the edge after the first game, as both after the first weekend, as both stepped up, but I expect to see one of them in the rotation as well. And that playing time that Josh Virginia and Anthony Gatlin got in that second half, very indicative of just the wide open nature of this Cornell lineup yeah. right now, especially with Robleski out. We didn't know what we were gonna see in terms of a rotation this past weekend. We're really not sure what we're, sure what we're gonna see even this week after you know we've played a couple of games. <laughs> well, there you have it. There's a brief glimpse at what you might expect this week in the two games. The first one, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. tip off. Big Red hosting Delaware. That's the first home game of the season, which means that Big Red is gonna be unveiling the banner from, from last year's tournament run, which should be great. Friday night, 7 p.m. tip off against St. Bonaventure. You can tune in for a live uh, radio broadcast of both of those games on Slope, and be, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Slope CU Sports. Thanks for watching, guys.